Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm doing a video on sort of the basic theme of uh, how to save money acquiring wood. And this is going to be part of a series. I'm not sure how many videos I will do. They're not going to be sequential. I'll do one sort of every, probably every 10 days or two weeks as the material comes together. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, this might be a good time to do that uh, so that you don't miss a program. When I get them all together, I'll put them all in a playlist so you'll be able to uh, review them all then. And also, don't forget that the details of this will be on Woodwork Web, so if you don't catch it on this video, you'll be able to go back to Woodwork Web and actually read about it. So, let's get started with the one of the first woods I wanted to save money on, which was pallet wood. I should let you know the reason I'm doing pallet wood first is because if I don't, we'll get, I'll get so many questions on it as we go along uh, that this way I can address a lot of those questions that people have asked uh, and we'll see how it fits in to the whole series as we go along. About 25 or 30 years ago, I had this idea that if I could acquire pallet wood, I could make inexpensive rustic furniture and I actually wrote a business plan for it and when you do a business plan there's also a, a, a proof section that you need to go through to prove to see that it'll work. And what I'm going to show you today is all of the information that I learned on acquiring pallet wood and by the way I in the end I decided that the cost of acquiring the wood was going to be far too expensive uh, for what I would be able to charge for the furniture. So here's what I learned about acquiring pallet wood. Now I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't use pallet wood. Uh, the whole purpose of this series of videos is to educate you so that you have an expectation when you go out and do these things of, of how you're going to work with them. Now when you're out driving around uh, you see pallets everywhere but when you go to collect them uh, they're hard to find and that's the truth because <laughs> I know when you're out trying to find them and collect them uh, and you always have to go and ask if they're in a location where it looks like they might belong to a business you need to ask for them because you don't want to be accused of stealing them uh, and if a pallet is painted it's out of bounds because the painted ones are always going back to some sort of a, a recycle center or some place where they refurbish them or reuse them so those you don't even want because they're painted anyway. Um, and you know what? Pallets are hard to handle. They're not like picking up a couple of boards or something. These are big awkward things uh, and of course there's a thickness to them so they have to be stacked. Um, so be aware that uh, you know you're going to be putting some physical exercise into collecting these things. When you get them to your shop they are hard to break down and you know there's uh, different ways of doing that when I first started doing this I used like a wrecking bar and um, I'm going to put a link to a process that I developed for breaking them down that actually works very well um, but you know what there's and there's uh, reciprocating saws. Now we can use reciprocating saws. We can use uh, there's special uh, pallet breakdown and I've not used some of the, the wrecking bars to break them down uh, but it's all hard work. You're not just going to pick up a board and start using it. You need to make it a board. Now when you go out collecting pallets you're going to find very quickly that first of all you're dealing with about the worst quality wood that you could ever get. Uh, they're full of knots, the, very often the edges are damaged, there are splits in them. In fact the, the ends of almost every board are split so right off the bat you need to cut sort of that end off because it's it isn't any good. Uh, there's nails and screws embedded in it and the worst is in almost every one of them because they're on the ground there's bits of rocks and gravel and whatnot embedded in it so all that stuff is really hard on tools. Now I picked this palette for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all if you look at the staining on the outside there's a little bit of rust uh, but there's quite a bit of staining and they're not exactly the same thing because the iron reacts with the tannin that is in oak and it stains it and it's kind of a purpley stain and you can see that that stain is not just on the outside that stain goes very deep in so you would have to cut that all the way off uh, and you need to cut the split off anyway the other reason I picked this is this is a very thin the tops on this most pallets are about 
a half or three quarters of an inch thick. This one is only three eighths. There's not very much wood and it's rough three eighths. So if you were to use this and say you were to clean it up and run it through a joint or in a planer, um, you're going to have like quarter inch wood to use in the end. There's really not very much left here. And the other thing is the the outside, the base of this is poplar, and poplar is a um, not a great wood to use for uh, woodworking, depending, of course, on what you're using. Um, and this kind of wood here, uh, of course, and it's got these cutaways on it. Um, a lot of this, the ends of these are just waste. There's really not much you can do with them. Now, I've just taken a moment and, and cut one little piece out of here, uh, and I wanted to show you this. Now, one of the reasons that we like pallet wood is because it has a, a natural patina. It's been sort of abused a little bit so that it's already kind of roughed up. Uh, but the problem is a lot of the wood, because there's so much waste of wood, we have to cut around knots and edges, and often the edges were a natural edge at one time, but they've been damaged in shipment and usage. So we end up that we have to cut them off because they, they look awful. So what happens is we get this beautiful brand new wood on one side, and sort of a patina, the roughness of the wood on another side. And when you, you put the two together, it's kind of a mismatch. It just, it just doesn't really work. It doesn't show uh, sort of the, the natural patina that you wanted to get in the wood in the first place. So that's always a problem is how do you cut the wood or do you just try and take it and plane it all? And the problem with these boards is that because pallets are always on the ground, they end up with embedded dirt and nails and um, rocks in them. And if you're going to run these through your jointer or your planer, you need to clean them thoroughly uh, with a, a wire brush and in some cases you even need to use like a paint scraper to make sure. Uh, and when you've done all of that, especially if you're using the ends, the, the connecting pieces, you'll need to make sure that there's no nails or screws in those, so you'll need uh, a metal detector to go through and make sure that there's no metal in them. So it's a lot of work using this wood. And because of the embedded nails and screws in these, um, you really need to be very, very careful. In fact, I never run any of this wood through my uh, table saw um, using one of my 10 inch blades. It just, you get free, free wood and then you ruin a 30 or $40 blade because you've hit a nail or a screw or something in there and chipped the carbide or, or chipped a tooth or something. The only blade I ever use to cut this uh, is these Freud Diablo. They're designed to cut through nails. You can put them on your table saw um, or you can use them with your circular saw, but it's the only blade that I will ever use to cut pallet because first of all, the blades are fairly inexpensive. I think they're like 12 bucks or something. Um, so we're not destroying a $40 blade, but they're also designed to cut through nails and screws. So uh, that's the kind of thing that you need to know before you start cutting into pallets and, and destroying a good quality blade. So what's the good news in using pallet wood? Uh, there's not a ton, but you know what? If you want to try it sometime uh, and you want to invest the time in cleaning up the wood and cutting it and, and doing all those things to it, uh, it's fine for making things like smaller boxes uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, what I do not recommend is that you ever use pallet wood for making cutting boards. And the reason for that is some of the pallet wood that I have seen has actually been used for hauling uh, different foodstuffs on. And after it's sat for a while, there's different molds and so on growing on it. Um, so you definitely never ever want to use something like that for a cutting board. So just something to be aware of. Now before I go, the one little thing I want to mention, you're going to get grubby um, if you're out looking for pallets and, and breaking them down and doing all of that. Um, and I've just been using, I'm not getting paid for this I should tell you, uh, I've been using this uh, hand cleaner from a 
small operator in uh, Illinois. Uh, it's called Twinco, and you know what? It's a great little hand cleaner. It's got some um, ground up walnut in it, so there's a, you can kind of feel a tiny bit of grit. But gee, you know what? It cleans really well. And when you're working around wood, you need to keep your hands clean because you don't want to be soiling the wood. So it might be something you want to try out, and I'm going to put a link for this on Woodwork Web, so you can check that out if you want. Well, that concludes my video on using pallet wood. Uh, and you know what? We've got lots of people who are experienced. I'm, I'm sure there's quite a few people who have used pallet wood. I'm looking forward to your comments because maybe you can help the people that would like to get free or inexpensive wood uh, to use in their workshops. And maybe you've got some ideas to help them along as well. So I'm interested in reading your comments as well. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, there's more in this series coming.